Hi everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I'm back with another review. Today, from the Takara Transformers Adventure line, we are taking a look at um, TAV-21 Optimus Prime. Um, this is the, I guess you can say leader class, leader scale sized um, Optimus Prime that they've released in their line. The car is a little funny. Um, they try to only have one or two versions of the character in the line. For example, whereas we got a warrior class Optimus Prime, Japan got a warrior class Nemesis Prime because they were going to release this figure as well as um, having released the three-step version of uh this figure now i've had it for a while since the summer and again you know i've been trying to think of a way to you know do the review without just saying the figures yeah but unfortunately it really is um i was excited for it i mean i didn't know what i was getting in terms of the hollowness and stuff but i was looking more forward to the gimmicks and things of that nature and Unfortunately, they kind of fall really short. Now, we're starting off in robot mode, and the first thing we're going to do is there are lights and sounds. We're going to go ahead and turn them on. So, you just want to come around the back here. There's a little blue switch, and I'm actually going to do this facing forward so you can hear and see the lights. As you can see, um, turning it on, you have the chest here light up as well as the eyes now i don't know if it's a separate lighting system or just the one light from the chest shooting up and obviously it says transformers adventure now to their credit takara did put in a lot of sounds so we're not going to go through all of them i'm sure another reviewer sat there pushing this button but just a few i wanted you to hear I think that was a wind blade. There's actually one I'm waiting for. They actually have the guy laugh. All right, well, unfortunately, I don't want to sit here pu pushing the button, but it, it, I just think it's interesting that, you know, in the Prime cartoon, they made a point of Prime being very stoic and serious and not laughing, and here they had the toy laugh. The um, One of the other gimmicks, as you can see on the um, right shoulder, there's, of course, the classic Autobot logo, but on the left shoulder, it has the logo, but it's a little recessed. Well, what they went ahead and did here, and let me adjust the camera for you i'm going to have to be adjusting the camera back and forth since it's a very tall figure and i need to be able to reach it so i'll have to move it um they went ahead and basically um i didn't realize this was an issue in japan but they really have a problem with people with when it comes to like scanning games scanning things with their cell phones while the toys in the package without buying it so, to counteract that, Takara has been doing a few things with the Adventure line. Number one, as I've shown you before, they've had those chest plates that go over the scannable logo as a fake cover. But in this regard, um, what they have is a rotating dial. So, there you have the Autobot logo, and then you have these two fake lo – well, one's fake, one's real. I don't know which is which since I don't play the game. And I don't think it would work in the American version. But I do think it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's a little upsetting that there's an issue like that. But um, I could understand why they would have to do it. The final gimmick here for robot mode is 
has to do with the weapons. Now, one of the things that I was excited about this figure is that it appears it came with a plethora of weapons, and it does. But um, as we'll see, we'll give them a close-up look. They are kind of small, and well, that's and also very flimsy and made of soft rubber. And when we when I show them on Prime, you'll see it does have an issue holding them. But the way he holds, them, if you look at the hands, the hands are very big and wide. Well, there's these little gray tabs on the forearms. If you press them down, what will spring forward is this gray piece right here that's actually a modular hilt, and it's on both sides. And what you can do is, top and bottom, plug um, the weapons in. Um, but like I said, well, there is a bit of a problem with Prime doing that. But before we get into that, Let's take a look at the weapons. And here's the weapons. Some of these might look familiar, as from what I've been able to understand, um, these were meant to supplement the individual warrior class figures by giving them the actual weapons from the show. Um, I think this is like a little lance-type weapon. Unfortunately, as you can see, the tip right here, because it's so soft, just coming out of the package, it was bent down like that. Um, obviously this is Prime's axe, and it's basically like a somewhat upscaled version of the one from the Warrior class figure. This is a little stiffer because of the painting here around the blade. Um, here you have, obviously, off, um, Strong Arms Crossbow. Now this sword, I was a little confused about, but then I saw an episode of Robots in Disguise. This is actually a sword Sideswipe creates with the Decepticon Hunter. So that I guess this is really for Sideswipe. And then this final thing, I guess you can say is a stylized version of the Star Saber or something. I mean, you can give this to B, you can give this to uh, Prime. And then very odd weapon is this handheld blaster. And I say it's odd because unlike the other weapons, this is actually made from a very solid, stern plastic. Focusing on the hands, um, I can just show you the weapons plugged in um, just rather easily. And now you can see the real main issue. The spring in the hilt action is actually not strong enough to hold the weight of the weapon up and causes it to droop. Now, sometimes I can get it to stay up, but... Um, it just, you know, really doesn't want to. In fact, usually I can get it to stay up better, but right now it's, like, drooping. And, unfortunately, it's the same on both sides. As you'll see here, you know, I can put in the uh, little Star Saber. And e this one's not as bad because this is a lighter weapon. Um, as you can see, th because this blade here on the axe is painted, um, it it's a little heavier. But you do have a little bit of that droop. Um, another issue I have is, and I'll show you here on the blaster. Now, remember I said the blaster was very odd, and it is because the fact that it's not soft plastic, it's very difficult to get it to peg in to the uh, weapon holes. But the other issue is it causes, with, with, the, with the blaster type weapons, they droop down because of the fact that these hilts are angled forward. Let me show you with the crossbow here, and you'll see a little bit better. Um, yeah, so what I usually end up doing is there are holes all over Prime. Forearm, the legs, the little side skirts here. So you can actually just peg them in as wrist-mounted blasters. That I just discovered, and I think it's a pretty cool uh, concept. But I am very disappointed by how droopy these weapons end up. Oh, I got it to actually stay up now. But if I were to add in, say, the lance here on the bottom, which in the instructions and in the promotional pictures they show you doing, yeah, it brings it down. So that's a little disappointing. Okay, transforming Optimus Prime is not fun. Uh, it's not difficult, but it suffers and is hampered by two issues. Number one, um, the plastic. I mean, I never really talk about plastic quality, but... This one, it feels very thin and cheap. Like, yes, it's hollow. You know, I mean, 
this the back of the forearms are hollow, the legs are hollow, but it's a very thin plastic. And on one hand, it's good because there's a step in the transformation where you end up having to bend panels out of the way to straighten things out. And that leads to the second problem. A lot of things just don't like staying pegged together. And it's just, you know, and then, and then there's like one main issue, which we'll get to. But to start things off, what you want to go ahead and do is come around the back here and just flip this panel section. Well, I guess naturally bring the arms out, rotate them forward and unpeg them from here, from that chest. And then what you want to do is start bending the smokestacks back. Rotate these wheels forward, and then that should be able bringing like oh, bring the head and chest back. It's it's, it's all it's like a, there's like a spring here that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But yeah, you should have everything um, basically uh, lined up, pegged into place. You know, it'll look the back will look something like that. Um, so you have the arms down. What you want to do then is um, come down to the legs. Go ahead. Um, you can't actually start to peg the legs together. Ah, there you go. But what you also need to do is open up all these panels. As you can see, it's starting to come together. You want to also rotate prime at the waist. I, I do apologize. I am trying to keep this all in camera, uh, but it is because it is such a big figure. It's a little unwieldy, if you will. Uh, but we are going to actually, you know, uh, get to some of the parts I just mentioned. First of all, these panels down here. These fold in, but now you got to fold them out. But then you fold them out, and there's like a tab and socket here that's supposed to fold in. But you also have to fold out those top panels off to the side. And, ugh. I just feel so uncomfortable doing that, like something's going to break at some point. And you can even see like that they bow a little, but they're supposed to do that. There's like no other way to get them in. I mean, but wait, we're not done yet. Now for like the real pain in the neck part, you have to angle the torso down and back. Oh, shut up. Oh, like, Yeah, God bless America. Anyway, what I'm doing here is you have to, like, angle this a certain way. There's no locking points. There's no, like, it, there's no clear way of how to do this. I hate this on Transformers because you have to judge the space. And let me just tell you, I tried bringing the hip section all the way forward and then this the torso section all the way up it doesn't work you have to have it on this like finagling angle and then what you do is you just swing the arms in at least we'll get them out of the way and believe it or not they are supposed to peg uh into uh they do peg in oh crud um, yeah, on the inside of the wrist, there is like a peg that is supposed to let them, that will hold them in place. And it actually works out kind of well, but again, you end up having to, um, fool around with it. And I'm, again, I'm sorry if this doesn't look, you know, fancy schmancy, it's a little bit of a pain to get it all in there. Um, but Thankfully, I was just able to. Next, what you can do is bring these panels up, and these will peg into uh, the sides of the forearms. I'm sorry, the sides of the shoulders, and that'll actually kind of hold it in place. And Holy moly, it's actually going a little bit easier than it usually does. 
Um, next thing is you want to bring the feet up and forward. And in a little bit, of, I guess you can say it's a cool step. These are going to actually form the top of the, the uh, cab of the robot. If I could, you know, there's a certain way you just got to bring it down, bring them down and back just like this. And these will actually, the, the feet unfortunately don't peg together, but they do peg into the top here. And, you know, however you want to do it, just get it in. Uh, there you go. And as you can see, the feet form the roof of the truck as well as this the the uh, back cab section next what you want to go ahead and do is unpeg these leg panels from the side um, I'm just gonna just tell you right now I'm probably going a little bit out of order it's just that this might be a little bit easier this way fold those out and then they do peg somewhere into the side of Optimus Prime you can close um, these leg panels they do close up again they peg in nicely usually um, to the inside right here there's a little tab and a slot and all that stuff and there you go and these um, actually I think what these do they actually interlock together and I think bearing any sort of disaster oh yeah like these will yeah things have a tendency to unpeg let me just tell you that, as I mentioned it before, and you're seeing it right now. Um, just like that. Oh, and I forgot the one thing in the back here. Uh, go ahead. You want to pull the um, what will be the little rampway for the uh, trailer up. And, uh, yep, that's Optimus Prime in its vehicle mode. And I think because I was hitting the button, there are some sounds for uh, vehicle mode. And there was a transformation sound. Yay. Great. We, we heard it during mid-transformation. It was annoying. Uh, like you just saw, this is no, no, not fun. It's not clean. It's not easy. I'm actually kind of amazed because I usually have to, like, fiddle with the hips and the legs to get them lined up properly. So, you know, hey, it's a bonus day for me. One of the advertised gimmicks, as you can see right here, is that warrior uh, a warrior class figure can fit in the back of the trailer for transport. I'm here. I'm using Supreme Mode Bumblebee. I mean, it's there, but there's no spring-loaded action. It's just you know, forward or back, it just goes in. Um, full disclosure, I did remove the weapons off this guy. Um, it's really not a lot of clearance in there, but it does work. Another uh, advertised gimmick is the fact that the trailer can open up like that, and you can have the figure standing in. And as you can see, I do have Bumblebee holding uh, a couple of the weapons. Uh, point of interest, when I put the blaster in his hand the first time, I did hear a little bit of a crack. I don't know if that was a uh, just a sound or, you know, that the blaster handle is actually too big, but... Everything else uh, fits in very nicely, as you see him holding the sword. And what, just what I'm doing right now is I'm just showing how um, these holes on the top here, you can peg the weapons in, you know, what have you. I'm not going to do them all, but it is there. Um, if you want to have them stealth, you can, you know, I, I peg the, the axe in underneath and stuff like that. This is a okay figure, like I said. Um, I was excited for it, but once I got it in hand, I really lost interest in it quick. And a lot of that has to do with just the quality of the plastic and the transformation. The gimmicks don't interfere with the transformation, um, but it's just not great. Now, this is being remolded for, as like the final Japanese figure of 2015, I think. It's supposed to be released this month alongside Supreme Bumblebee. And that's basically Optimus Prime, how he looked in the final episodes of Season 1, fighting Megatronus. With that, you know, as we in the United States know the design, the Mega Optimus Prime, with like the black and white, the striping... 
Um, all the weapons are going to be included. I think they're getting repainted, maybe even molded in like a stronger plastic. But the big gimmick is it's going to be this giant version of like the Star Saber, uh, Decepticon Crusher Sword. It's like huge. I mean, it's almost as big as the figure. Um, there's been pictures online of like Sideswipe holding it, and it's twice the size of Sideswipe. So that I'm looking forward to. Maybe the plastic tolerances have been tweaked because of the repainting they and, and the remolding because, you know, with the head, the shoulders, maybe things will go together better. I'm not holding out. Um, with that said, I definitely cannot recommend the figure this figure because I would recommend waiting for the repaint since that's more show accurate to how Optimus Prime looked. The size is appropriate. The look will be appropriate with that figure. If you're interested, I did get this figure off a of big bad. That's where I'm getting the other Optimus Prime. So definitely check it out, pick it up. Um, the repaint, I mean. For this one, like I said, it's an easy pass. Just go for the repaint. You know, plastic tolerances aside, if you like the sound gimmicks, and if you just want like a properly scaled Optimus Prime. This is your old pal Chuck for Optimus Prime. We'll see you next time.